Now, let's go on in the next session, the next lesson, to what we call level two, which would be to play two accents, one at the first sixteenth note and one at the last sixteenth note. So, one E and a. Uh. One E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a, uh, one E and a, uh, two da dee da dee da dee da dee da dee ba 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 e a san su This is our ultimate goal for shaker and this would be a very common shaker pattern that you could apply to lots of styles of music. I'm going to play it a little bit faster. E, A, San, Su. Notice how little I'm moving for the quiet notes the in-between notes. Watch this time and see I'm moving a very little amount. I'm not even really thinking about it. Mostly I'm thinking about the two louder sounds. The middle notes just kind of happen on their own. E, A, Sa, Tsu. So that's how you get a musical shaker sound. And if I have a smaller shaker, let's try it with something lighter. We can go much faster. And it's still the same pattern, but it has the same kind of feel where we're accenting beat one or note one and note four. E, A, E, A, Sansu. Let's go even faster. All right, so that's the same pattern. It's actually easier to go a medium tempo rather than very slow. So when you're first starting out or you want to show your students something they can do, I would recommend playing at a medium tempo like anything from say 105 to 130 beats per minute. That medium range or what we think of as moving into the dance tempo range around 120. For an added challenge, you can try playing at a slow tempo. And then from there, you can try things like putting the accent on different beats, maybe doing groups of three, or mixing it up, doing anything you can think of. So the question becomes, how do we improve on shaker? And the answer is really, play a lot of shaker to 
some fun music, um, music that you like or music that your students like, make sure it's fun because then it's going to be motivational and they're going to spend time doing it. A great strategy is to have a few shakers, maybe some egg shakers or small shakers. Put one um, in the kitchen area or put one uh, even in the bathroom or wherever you're going to be waiting, spending some time. If you drive, you could have one in your car uh, as long as you can drive safely and play the shaker. When you have a few minutes, uh, just play shaker if you're waiting for someone or waiting for something to, uh, you know, finish cooking or whatever it is around the house. You can leave some shakers around and pick them up several times a day. Maybe you can play along with some of your favorite music. And that is going to be a great way to make progress quickly and enjoy yourself and learn about different styles of music and get used to playing the shaker two different styles of music, which at the end of our music journey is something that we want to achieve, right? That's one of our goals. So get a few shakers, place them around, leave them out where you're going to find them easily, play with music that you like, and play with different styles of music and see how you can make the shaker fit with the music. And then you're going to improve quickly and your students will improve quickly. And then have them play shaker with a guitar player or try it yourself. Try playing just shaker with uh, somebody playing ukulele or guitar or piano. You can have shakers in a group of percussionists in a percussion ensemble. You can add shaker to a track, like a band track. Uh, you can use shaker with play along tracks. So you can play the shaker with just about any any musical setting and make it fit and then from there get you know make sure you have some good shakers and add to your shaker collection and then you'll be ready for any kind of music, uh, any situation, any time, any place. Okay? I'm Kalani. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you in a future lesson.